Kathy, you know how much I like to use songs to teach science content. I do know that, Jeff, but tell me you're not going to sing again. No, not this time. But there is a great song about mixtures, which would be a really terrific way to engage students in today's topic. It's on Atlas for our friends to use at home, so let's play a part of it so people get the idea. Sounds good. <laughs> can be found on the Discovery Education website. Well, I have to say that was a great song for our new unit, totally. Matter and Its Interactions. Um, again, there are two standards that you'll be addressing. The first standard is 5-PS1-3. Make observations and measurements of substances to describe the characteristic properties of each, including color, hardness, reflectivity, electrical conductivity, thermal conductivity, response to magnetic forces, and solubility. And 5-PS1-4, conduct an experiment to determine whether the mixing of two or more substances results in new substances with new properties, a chemical reaction, or not, a mixture. You should explore both standards with many investigations found on ATLAS, but we're going to be focusing on the second standard for the video today. So mixtures are everywhere you look. Many things in nature are mixtures. Look at rocks or even the ocean. Anything that you can combine is a mixture. Think of something you eat, like this granola bar. This is a mixture because I can see different substances, peanuts and I can see raisins and uh, some cranberry mixed together. And don't forget crab rangoons, they're a mixture. Yeah, that's right, crab rangoons. It's my favorite thing from the Chinese restaurant. You've got creamy um, cream cheese and crab meat filling and a nice crispy fried dough shell. All right, all right, back to reality. Yeah. Um, so now when we have something like distilled water, a nice, go ahead, clear glass of distilled water, that's a pure substance. There are only water molecules in there, nothing else. Um, a mixture would be a glass of water and then something like our Kool-Aid or Crystal Light mixed in. A mixture would be the glass of water with other things dissolved inside. So if I pour in the solid, you can still see chunks of solid in there. However, if we mix it, we start to make those chunks of solid, which are really sugar crystals, dissolve in the water. And now you can't see the specific crystals anymore. Each of the substances in the glass still keeps its own properties. So Kathy, if you boiled off the water, you'd still have the Kool-Aid left in the glass? Exactly. Even though the Kool-Aid dissolves in the water, I could let this dry and the water would evaporate, leaving just the Kool-Aid crystals. So mixtures are made up of two or more substances which are not chemically combined with each other. The components of a mixture in each of them, each of the components in a mixture keeps their original properties, and the components can be separated easily. Even like my granola bar, you could separate out the peanuts, the raisins, and the cranberry, whereas in this mixture, you have to let the water evaporate or dry off, and you'd be left with the Kool-Aid crystals again. So each of the um, components keeps their original properties. So teachers, in this unit, tell the students that they're going to investigate what happens when different substances are mixed together. And we're going to begin by mixing something like water and sand. So you ask the students, when water and sand are mixed together, do they change into something new? And some students might say that um, a change has occurred because the mixture looks different, but again, the definition is we could separate it out into its component parts. So as an example, hang on to that for a second. We have a little bit of soil 
So let's move our Kool-Aid mixture. Mm -hmm. So we have some water. And this time, if I mix in some dirt, soil, sand, something like that, and mix it in, again, settles to the bottom, I can mix and mix and mix. And we'll just let that settle. And you'll see very quickly, let's move that a little closer to our camera. Yep. You can see that the particles of the solid are settling to the bottom. It's not mixing as completely as the Kool-Aid. It's not dissolving right. in the Kool-Aid. Right. Right. And we could separate this out into the two component parts. Lead students to understand that the mixture could be separated back into its original parts by filtering out the water or soil and explain how the, mi how the mixture, if left alone, will settle into the two parts. Yep. Now I ask students to predict what would happen if the following substances were mixed together. Plastic beads and water, rocks and packing peanuts, the substances don't change. They can easily be separated out from the mixture. Also make sure that students understand that a mixture can be made by using two liquids. Even something as simple as oil and water is a mixture. Do you want to, oh, so you have oil poured there. I do. Here's some water. Always looks cool. So even, and my, I've got some Kool-Aid on this, but here, go ahead and give that a mix and see what happens. I'm gonna keep mixing it, mixing it. So again, coming back to that definition that in a mixture, the two components can be separated out back to their original parts. And the more examples you give students, the better they're gonna to come to understand um, this definition of mixtures. So the next thing you might um, talk about moving from mixtures to that next step, and we're going to talk a little bit more about like a chemical reaction, mm -hmm. is to predict what might happen when you have something like vinegar and baking soda and combine those together. Now before doing this activity, we want to revisit all of our safety protocols. Yeah. You want to make sure that students are wearing um, safety goggles splash mm. resistant goggles and not just safety glasses. The ones Jeff has are called safety glasses. That's for impact. So if you put those on and yeah, something was <laughs> to impact your eye, it would be a protection. That's not going to help when you're doing chemistry because the vapors and fumes can go in the side and underneath. So you want to make sure that the students have a, um, a safety goggle that's going to prevent the, the vapors or fumes from going into the eye. Put it on, Kath. Let's see how it looks. <laughs> yeah, over my glasses? I, I need just, to see. Yeah. Okay. So the other thing we want people to understand is something like vinegar, even though we consider it benign and it's in our house, it is still a chemical. So before using any chemicals with students, you want to review, review a safety data sheet an SDS, and you're like, oh, well, that sounds a little bit like high-level chemistry to me, but you can Google safety data sheets for anything. Um, the uh, chlorine that you use in your pool, the ammonia that you use for house cleaning. So when you Google SDS or safety data sheet, you'll get a document back that will talk about all of the hazards or the potential dangers for that chemical and things you should do to protect yourself. Highly recommend this as an at-home practice. Hmm. Okay. So now if we're going to do our little experiment with vinegar and baking soda, we're going to tell students that sometimes when two or more substances are mixed together, a change occurs and another substance or substances are formed. Um, you're not able to see the parts. You're not able to separate out the parts anymore. And this is called a chemical reaction. Gas may form, heat might be produced, um, and the color could change. These type of changes indicate that a chemical reaction has occurred. And we also want to explain that some substances, when mixed together, you know, still produce no chemical reaction. So in this case, we're going to well, we're going to take our safety goggles, right? I'm going to have to now not see. Take our safety goggles and model model the appropriate behavior for your students, no matter what you think you look like. All right, so we're going to put a little bit of vinegar into our beaker, and you don't need much. And then we're going to add a little bit of our baking soda. Nice. And I don't know if you can hear and see. 
my hands to the back. So there's bubbling, there's fizzing, there's a color change to the vinegar. Oh, yeah. There's a smell coming out. Here's another important thing, never ever smell like so. You want to be able to hold away and waft fumes towards you for smelling. So once again, we saw changes. We heard change, mm -hmm. we heard fizzing, we saw bubbles, and we smelled a change. And there was also a color change to the vinegar in the bottom. Baking soda has the chemical name sodium bicarbonate. Vinegar is a combination of water and 5% acetic acid. Since both materials contain chemicals, when the two combine, there's a chemical reaction. When you mix the, mix the vinegar and baking soda, it's the carbon dioxide gas that makes the bubbles. Now let's try inflating a balloon. This activity can be completed as a classroom demonstration, or you could have multiple setups for students to work in cooperative groups. Have students put on goggles, don't forget that. You'll need some baking soda, vinegar, and an empty water bottle and balloon, and some paper towels for cleanup. So, go ahead, Jeff. So oh, okay, so we want to put in a little bit of um, baking soda into our balloon, and we kind of preloaded about maybe a half a teaspoon of baking soda into the balloon. And you want a little bit of vinegar in the water bottle. Now about one, four teaspoons. Four, not about much, because you saw how much gas that produced. About, about like so? What do you think, a little more? A little more. Okay, so next you're gonna place the balloon over the mouth of the water bottle. Once we have the balloon securely attached to the water bottle, we're gonna to start to allow the baking soda. So you saw that we had a little bit of technical difficulty, so I went out to YouTube and found this quick video clip. So you add your baking soda into the balloon. Once the baking soda's in the balloon, you go ahead and put that on top of the water bottle, which already has the vinegar at the bottom. Allow the baking soda to spill down into the water bottle. And now you're capturing that chemical reaction, the new substance being formed, the carbon dioxide gas being collected in the balloon. So then the question is, has a chemical reaction occurred? And you were gonna ask students and they'll say yes. And then you wanna know why. What clues can tell you that a chemical reaction has occurred? Can we reverse it? Can we separate out the components? Did you see evidence of things like a color change or a smell or a sound or gas bubbles? So, so Jeff, in addition to the vinegar and water balloon baking soda, um, there's another thing you can use to kind of show a chemical reaction, and that's using Alka-Seltzer tablets and water. Sounds easy. And um, again, please, the safety goggles and, and keep kids away from um, smelling or touching or anything. But I have a solid and I have um, a liquid, this could be similar to if I use the Kool-Aid, right? So when I put the Alka-Seltzer in water, what do I see happening? Oh. I very clearly see bubbles. Listen. Can hear it. Can hear the gas bubbles. Yeah. I see changes, very aggressive bubbling changes happening here. I hate aggressive bubbles. <laughs> So once again, another example of chemical reaction. Once that Alka-Seltzer is completely dissolved in this liquid, could I evaporate off the water and get my Alka-Seltzer back? And the answer is going to be no, because right. with all this bubbling, a lot of that Alka-Seltzer tablet has turned into gas. Right. That's cool. So before we wrap up our little session on mixtures, I want you to take a look at this delicious blueberry mm, scone that, good. that I got from the bakery. Now. Is this a mixture or has a chemical reaction occurred? Do I have a new substance? This one's tough, this right? This is a tough one. So what evidence do you have that it's a mixture? Oh, I see different colors. Like I the, see different t textures and pieces. Yeah, like the berries. I could separate out these berries, right? So that could be a mixture. Yeah. But then again, what, was, what did it take to make the scone, right? So the baker added eggs. They added flour, sugar, butter. Can I separate those ingredients back out? No. I don't think so. No, I think there's only one solution to this, and that's eat it. Ah, nice. So, as we wrap up this uh, video for you on um, matter and mixtures and such, we're going to enjoy our scone. And please know that 
Science matters. matters.